Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm so thrilled today to be talking about the wonderful series, The English. We are joined today by Emily Blunt, who plays Cornelia and is also an executive producer on the series, as long, along with Chaske Spencer. And Emily, I wanted to start with a question for you in the way that you've shaped this really beautiful textured and layered character, because she's there first and foremost, kind of almost driven by anger in, in this path of revenge. And at the same time, there's a real vulnerability and softness to her at the same time. Um, and I was interested in, in when you were developing this character and really shaping her, how you found the emotional landscape and, and always allowed those two different sides and emotions to coexist because it feels very real in that regard. Thank you. Thank you for that question. Um, I mean, Hugo had written such a nuanced, textured character. He writes these characters with such delicacy and such love, you know. And I think I was endlessly surprised by her. So I lent into that because I think the end of the day, we're used to seeing quite formulaic characters sometimes and quite in quite formulaic scenes in a lot of films and television. But um, this character and this world carved out new space for itself all the time. And I think human beings are a myriad of different things. At any, any one moment is about a myriad of different things. It's never about one. And I think because of the dexterity of Hugo's writing, it allowed for that. And you had so much to play with. Um, you know, for example, she, she does seem to enact uh, violence uh, rather instinctively and then is guilt ridden afterwards. And that seemed quite funny and human and sort of surprising. So I just thought she was really touching. You know, she's a giant contradiction. She has this fevered need for revenge and yet she's, hopeful and quite buoyant and she's suffered suffered huge loss and yet she still pursues and seeing the good in people so I don't know I just was really captivated by her and it required all of me I I have never played a role like this which requires just all of you and everything you've got and and I love that stretch and that challenge you know that's amazing. And and Chaske, with your character, there's such a, a quietness and a stoicness to him. He's also carrying a lot of trauma and pain and loss in his world. And, and his words are very far and few between, but when he does speak, it means so much. But he does gradually start to open up, you know, even just the moment where he talks about having lost his family. That's a really monumental growth for him to have gone through in this dynamic with the two of them. And so as you were shaping this character, how did you find the calibration episode by episode and scene by scene of just those really nuanced adjustments that show him opening up because a small action for him is a really huge motion for him as a character. It was really working with Hugo. And also I had the scripts for quite some time when we were going to film, the pandemic had just happened. So I had plenty of time to marinate myself with this character and, and just sit with him for a long time, which I don't know if I would have had the same performance if I didn't have that time to really sink into that. And when I got to Spain, it was, you know, talking with Hugo and uh, working with him and because he wrote the, the the script. And so he knows exactly what where he wants the, the character to go. And it was just easy to uh, talk with him and he helped guide in. And then I don't know, it, it's it's you work on characters like this. It's kind of a you just throw it and hopefully it lands somewhere because I have no idea. But I felt like talking with some of the vets and stuff that I kind of pulled for Eli, I could kind of find little beats and stuff just from imitating someone who told me a story on the pauses and how they talked. And I like, you know, that's trauma there. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to let that go. So in that scene you're talking about, it was very much, uh, it's, it's, it's a collection of people that I had interviewed and uh, just kind of pulled from and uh, seeing how their ticks and stuff move around with mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And for the two of you, how did you work together to really find the delicacy of the body language and their mannerisms around one another, even to the fact of when we get to the point in the story where they're, they're kind of on their own roads and paths for a little bit and they're not side by side, we see a difference in how they're carrying themselves and how they're moving in the world based on the time that they've spent together getting to know each mm -hmm. other. And so how did you find what it looked like of these two people that have gone from complete strangers to building more of these elements of trust in the physicality alongside each other? Well, I think um, I think their relationship at the time may have been outside of the social norms, but to them it's so irrelevant because all that matters to them is that they survive and they, they need each other for it and they're safe with each other. There's a great sort of 
comfort with each other. And you do realize their relationship was sort of in the stars in some way. And there's that line she says at the beginning where she goes, um, that's how we met. That's why we met. It was in the stars and we believed in the stars, you and I, they're, they're, they're kindred spirits. And, and that's evident, you know, just they come from polarized backgrounds. They know nothing about each other before meeting. And yet they find in each other what they're sort of lacking in themselves. And the scenes were so delicate. They were so tender. And you see this friendship sort of this trust start to grow between them. And there's a great modernity to their relationship too. It sort of feels quite intimate and modern and sort of not stuffy and posed. And that's all in Hugo's writing. There was just so much to fall back on. Like the script was just the softest place to land because just endlessly moving what you could draw from and he's so easy to work with it was just effortless and you get to kind of come to work and play in this world that was really surprising to the two of us as well like you kind of never knew what would happen in the scenes and we didn't come in with too much of a pre-planned idea of what we'd do it would just sort of appear wouldn't yeah. it it just wouldn't nothing felt too strategized oh, i think you see it on the screen you really you really feel that yeah. You know, and, and for you, Chaska, as well, you're playing a character where, you know, her, Emily's character even calls him out for, he often says very different things to what he ends up doing. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. so as you were going this, through the scripts, once you read that line, how did that shape the way that you were going into a lot of scenes knowing, okay, what he's actually saying out loud and how he feels about things and, you know, oh, I'm not going to teach you that, but knowing that he probably actually will, how did that mm -hmm. inform the dichotomy of, of finding his actions and motions? Well, that's Cornelia. That's Cornelia pulling that out of Eli. And I think that's all her. It's all her uh, because Eli doesn't do that. But for some <laughs> reason, this woman who saved his, or they're saving each other and they're on this journey together, you know, he allows that to happen. And, it, and I don't even think he allowed, I think it just has to happen with Cornelia because she's, I believe she's very persistent in that. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, Eli, I think he just gave up. <laughs> And Emily, you know, you were talking before about the, those moments where she's almost quite shocked by her own behavior and has really visceral emotional responses to the violence that that she enacts, you know, and she goes from covering her eyes at the beginning to having a moment where she breaks down and cries a little bit after something. But, it, you know, it's always a different emotional response depending on what she's gone through and where she is in the larger landscape of the story. And she becomes more confident in herself and in those motions out of necessity and survival. Um, and so how did you find those those kind of gestures or those emotional responses and how much you thought she would allow onto the surface because she always reins it in quite quickly. I mean, I think um, I think you see her have less and less of an emotional response <laughs> as the body count mounts, you know, <laughs> over the series, um, which I also like. You see that resilience grow. You see her naivety and innocence going into this start to kind of dwindle and fall away. And there's a great line that she has in episode three where she's about to do something bad again. And she says, there's just something about this country. It's like she's been taken over by something. And it's sort of an out of body experience at some point. And it's all leading her and hopefully reinforcing her and building her towards this final destination where she needs to confront the big bad wolf who's really at the core of her anger and her pursuit, you know. Um, but I love that there's nothing cool about the violence. It's a bit instinctive, a little bit messy. It's sort of just like there's a scene where I shoot Mog's son in episode four and it's sort of just instinctive and messy and ugly. And it's just not, nothing is cool and with swagger. It's all sort of just happens. It's like she throws herself off a, off a cliff and just figures out how to fall on, on, on the way down, you know. Well, I really, really loved the the layers and the textures that you've both brought to these characters and to your performances. Thank so congratulations you. and thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks so much.